Hello friends, this is me and Captain Gran, and he is here on a visit and I will take the opportunity to explain to him my ideas and also when I'm building I think oh this was not too good but on the next boat I make it better. Isn't that how we're gonna do it? Yeah always. <laughs> Bu building boats are uh... Iterative work, as you say, yes. so uh, that means you have to build a lot of boats before you get the yes. perfect one. And here is one thing is the size of the boat. This is about this boat is going to be. And now this is the next boat. And this is this boat. And so. But anyway, there's a man called Perry. He's in California, he's built boats like this. And this is compared to his boat. This is not bigger, and this is not bigger. And this is Ming Ming. And if you put this on here, you can see it's, my boat is very much smaller than this. And so even if the length is, the area is different. And then captain said, well, but the periphery is bigger, but the periphery is just a line, you know, but this is a surface. Surfaces, winds over lines. <laughs> so this is about the size. And how I do it? Well, me and Matt Leiden in Florida made drawings for a chain room. But that was a boat with a transom. So now I just kept the four part of it. And we cut away the transom, and here's the midsection. And here was, I was thinking nine meter, and then I was thinking 5.8 meter, but then finally, 7.2 meter by 1.2. And then I just scaled up the beam, and the height, and the length, with different scale factors. And then I can't get anything, because I got this numbers all of these little ones up here, up here and up here and up here. So by this way you can create any box. And uh, now what was it more we have to tell them, Captain? Here is a little paper we wrote. And this is how long it's gonna be. And the same length. And like I said, I like the long narrow boats you know like the whale boats they are very seaworthy and one reason I, I like them is that they are very easily driven like they go away oh. are, are they shallow draft as well yes definitely because and that was 1980 I sailed around Cape Horn first I tried 74 but the boat was pissed and capsized and then I got this on my mind. I had to go around Cape Horn and see what it is. And I did, but I put a deep keel on it. Yeah. And after Cape Horn, I came to the Falkland Island and that was a windy place, you know, and during my four months stay there, the wind was up to 100 knots on three occasions. And but you know, anchoring up there, you are always exposed. But with a little shallow boat with twin kids, you can go up in a little creek and stay protected there. And when the tide goes out, you just walk ashore. So it's such a good thing. And now, when I'm going to Chile, it's also down there in the southern Chile. There, there is not a lot of marinas and things like that. I don't even think there is one. So shallow draft with twin kids, like we have there, and uh, the divinity cell is now 70 millimeter, but that's a bit overdoing it. So this boat and the previous boat is, was 122, but the next one was going to be 120. So it's a little bit more narrow. Okay. If I go down by size to 50 millimeter, again 
four centimeter beam inside. So save more space from the previous pull. And the previous pull, I can subtract of it. I was out to see for 150 days in two years, 2020, 78 and 23 days, 20, 21, 21 and 27 days, starting up here, or down there. So that's a long way in a little boat, you know, but the beam was no problem with it, but it was mostly like condensation and things like this. So what we got more? Oh yes, so in this book we got the bed is uh, 1.8 meter. Next bit boat will be 1.9 meters, so 10 centimeter longer, and this dining room will be a little bit longer too, like 10 centimeter. And the off part is, I think, 1.7 meter here, but that will be 2.2 meter. And one of the idea is electric engine. Now they even say that it's going to be forbidden to have uh, electric engines in uh, in cars. No, not electric, but fuel engines in electric cars. There's a lot of development on batteries and uh, engines and things like that. And it's going to be good to. How, how come you? Uh don't want to use the sculling oar anymore? Well, if it's a long way, you know. Sculling oar is good, but if you've got some headwinds and if it's for like 10 or 20 miles, if I'm in the shipping lines and get the calm, I might not be able to do it as fast. And also, sometimes, like 2011, I came outside for the sun to Madeira. Yes. And for 10 hours I was going, you know, the whole night. I came in in the morning too. And then when you start suddenly, like my hands got a bit raw. And uh, last year outside uh, Horta, I had in that source, I was for two days out there, you know. The, the current was just a little, little bit against me, you know. I was just not fast enough, you know. So it's going to be an extra help then. I don't know, maybe this is going to be in many years' time, you know. It's like five, six years' time, and, and I'm going to keep the boat. So maybe in 10 years' time, maybe my muscle will be at it. A bit it, it will be a good help uh, coming in and out of port, but especially when you have to, when you come close to shore and want to uh, dock the boat in some uh, some bay somewhere. Yes, and also like if I'm becalmed in the shipping lines, you know. So well, it's just a little bit about that. And I made many mistakes on this boat, you know, like. Like this. Here. Now this is going to be batteries here, and this was going to that. But I'm going to redo that. And before I had moving ballast, and so it's many things I've been redoing. But this is for many many years into the future. And what do you think? Did I forget to tell them something? No, Sven, I uh, definitely think that was a, a good and interesting long uh, plan for your current boat and uh, your next boat and what the differences are, uh, which I find very interesting. <laughs> Thank you very much, Sven. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Hello, friends. This is me and Captain Grohn, and today is the first of July.
the year 2022. And yesterday, Captain helped me to put in a video about monet not monetizing the website, but begging. And some people thought this was good, some people thought that was bad, and some people said, but Sven, this is how the world is, you know, we live on advertisement and things like this, and if you're going to make money, you know. But then, in 1975, I worked on Martha's Vineyard in New England, and somehow the most rich people in America lived on that island. It's very rich people there, and I became friend of some rich people, and one of the very richest ones said, Sven, you are intelligent, you should give up the small boats, you are enough intelligent to make big boats, and that will make you bigger money. And they even said, at that time I was writing for Cruising World, that uh, my friends, they are the owners of National Geographic, and uh, we fixed that, that your articles come in in National Geographic. But then I said to myself, well, if this happened, I'd be very famous, and this simple life will be destroyed. So that's what the choice I made, you know, more simple life and less money, and I think that's a good choice. And Captain, what do you think? The same question, uh, what I did was. Yeah, I uh, can say that I totally agree with you, Sven. Uh, is there a more honest way to earn your money than uh, presenting your project for free and uh, whoever wants to contribute can contribute if they want and uh, not be uh, have commercials pushed on them even if they don't want their products okay thank you captain and he comes the camera again thank you and now I told you a little bit about this video is about Next boat, but next boat been a long time. And here was 60 years ago. I started with this boat, and it's like this and like this. And I had a crew, and this is from the French magazine Voile Voilier. And then we have this boat, 19. Well, you can read it yourself. And then was this boat. And this boat is around the Cape Horn with, and this boat, and this boat, and this boat, and this boat, and now comes of Deutsch. Here is the uh, Metisim, Metem, Self Modify, Eaton, Blicking Zeta, and then this one, and this one, a schooner, 1986, and this one, and this one. And this one, and this one, and this one, and this one, and this one. And then with Captain, we sailed to Florida with a sport, a Vega, 2007, I think it was, and that's one. And since then, we have this boat, 2018, I said this was a beam of one. 0.04 meter beam and I had the sail side by side and here is with the captain and he's just outside Hunnebo Strand where captain comes from and here's the captain and here's to me and now we're making this new book and already many changes and we're making the elliptical hatches uh, this, the next is from the front one, over here, and I'm just going to have a bigger one over here in the back, and uh, so, with this big, so, And all the tools and 
this is the I sure we want to get the dust up from too. This is just a little for today. I will thank Captain for the patience of helping me with this. And so things are moving along. And thank you and goodbye.